Welcome. Before we begin our community forum, we'd like to acknowledge that the city of Hamilton is situated upon the traditional territories of the Erie, the Utrao, the Huron Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, and Mississaugas. With our event happening virtually, we invite you to take a moment to consider and acknowledge for yourselves the traditional territory on which you are currently living or working. I'm Teddy Katz, your host and moderator for this Hamilton 2026 Commonwealth Games Community Forum taking place over the next two days. A couple of months ago, the committee said it would host this forum to share more details about the plans for the games, the budget, and the impact on our communities. Before I introduce our panelists, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am first and foremost a proud Hamiltonian. I've always believed this is a city that punches well above its weight. The city has been the birthplace of many great moments and many great people who have made their mark on the world. As for me, I spent two decades as a national reporter at CBC. As a sports journalist, I reported for many of the top sports events around the globe, most Olympics, Paralympics, Pan Am Games, Commonwealth Games from 1992 in Barcelona until the London Olympics in 2012. After that, I was a member of the organizing committee for the Toronto 2015 Pan American Games, where Hamilton once again played an important role hosting soccer. So I have a pretty good sense of the kind of things that need to happen for these events to be truly transformational and worth it for the host city. I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly including on the one extreme, Barcelona in 1992, and how the games transformed that city to Sochi in 2014. I encourage you to take a look at the blog I wrote on the Hamilton 2026 website, where I say the Commonwealth Games in 2026 is quote unquote, Hamilton's moment. One thing I examined, the host committee's plans to turn its athletes village into affordable housing as one of the game's biggest legacies. I wrote about what happened in Toronto at the Pan Am Games in 2015, where one of the two buildings in our village became affordable housing for 250 residents. After the Games, almost half of the units went to refugee families or newcomers. Other tenants include veterans, seniors, people with disabilities, and previously homeless youth. One family came from Iraq, escaped from a life of violence and oppression, and now have a new home. So these events done the right way can really change lives. Indeed, affordable housing and the social impact of the games is such a key part of the hosting plan that we're holding a second community forum tomorrow afternoon at the same time to discuss those plans in details. Today, four of the leaders behind Hamilton 2026 are here to speak to you directly about why they believe this is an unprecedented opportunity. We'll spend the first 20 or 30 minutes hearing presentations about the overall vision and roadmap for the 2026 Commonwealth Games. You'll hear a budget update. We'll provide a big picture of what the games will look like from a sports point of view. Most importantly today, the committee is here to listen. In the last hour, the committee wants to hear from you to help customize the plan even further so it creates the kind of significant economic and social impact that will transform this region. You can ask questions directly to the panelists by clicking on the Q&A button on your screen. We've already received several questions in advance and I'll try to read out as many as possible in the time we have. A summary, a summary of the responses will be available on the hamilton2026.ca website. Without further ado, let me begin by introducing our first panelist, Louis Fraporti. Louis is the managing partner of Galling WLG Hamilton and a key member of the games team. Louis will share the overall vision for the games. He'll tell us why Hamilton is in a unique position to design a game that meets the specific needs of our region. Louis, the floor is yours. Hi, Ted, thank you for that. I'll confess, I don't think I've been called Louis since grade 13, so it was great to hear that again. I'm delighted to be with everybody here today to share information about our bid. And let me begin by thanking those of you watching for taking the time from your busy day to participate in the event. We understand that it's a challenging time and we hope that what you hear today and tomorrow will give you cause for optimism. As Teddy said, it's the first of two days of consultation. We will have consultation today, this evening with business leaders, tomorrow around housing, and in the upcoming weeks, additional consultations with a variety of community groups. These consultations are not our first as we've been spanning the community in recent weeks to meet with community leaders, 
activists, political leaders, our business improvement area leaders, educational and not-for-profit organizations, sport organizations, indigenous leaders, and a host of others hoping to better understand their needs and how they might be addressed through this effort. And these presentations today won't be our last as we'll be before City Council on October 7th to update them more fully on our efforts. And beyond these immediate presentations, we will be significantly expanding our outreach and consultations with community groups and organizations to listen and better understand their needs and concerns. And this is because we're not here to present a games bid. We are not competing to host a sporting event. We're here as part of the Commonwealth sporting community working to figure out how we can collectively create a movement, a movement focused on social impact using the games. Earlier this year, before the pandemic and shutdown and masks were a reality, I had occasion to speak at a community summit my colleagues and I at Gowling WLG hosted. In my remarks, I focused on what I see as the fundamental challenge before us. And I'd like to briefly revisit those remarks with you now as relevant to our work here. What we see with disheartening frequency in the world around us and increasingly here in Hamilton, on the streets, on social media, at council, on the news, is conflict, antagonism, anger. You know what I'm talking about. In all of this, we've come to accept the fiction that we're battling each other, that we're always in competition with each other. People, organizations, groups, constituencies, arguing and competing with each other for limited resources with every decision being about the selection of winners and losers. And the winners tend often to be the same and the losers likewise. For some in this current conversation, that competition is presented as follows. If we spend money on games, we won't have it for housing of the poor. We understand why that's said and that it is said for completely understandable and justifiable reasons. But respectfully, as we believe you'll come to appreciate, this is a false choice. What we are inviting with great humility is volunteers who love this community and who in many cases are not even from this community, but are drawn to the vision of what the city can be, is that we try to see this opportunity differently. We would invite you to consider that the many conflicts in our community of which you are all well aware are not about or even with each other. Ultimately, they're about a much more menacing and powerful opponent. The battle we're all fighting or should be fighting the battle which our volunteer group is fighting with all of our hearts is a battle against the absence of opportunity, a lack of resources and support, and the feeling of hopelessness, despair, and righteous anger that those deprivations give rise. Suffering to be sure that has always afflicted our disadvantaged communities disproportionately, but owing to the great equalizer of suffering that the pandemic is, this deprivation, fear, and insecurity has virtually all of us in its grip. As confusing as this may seem to some, it is against this formidable menace that all of our efforts around these games are focused. It is why we are doing this. It is why we are doing this now. Our passion and commitment as volunteers arises from our unique understanding of the power of sport, of the unique opportunity that the Commonwealth Games presents, but mostly from our awareness of the implications of having the unprecedented ability for the first time ever to have an international sporting organization that encompasses 71 nations and territories, a third of the world's population, and well over a billion people spectating, to have all of this be offered up to us in our community to use as a tool and instrument of change, a weapon even, so that we might collectively conquer this menace of despair right now together. For the first time, a community, a province, a country is not being asked to support the success of a global sporting property. A global sporting property is offering itself up to support a community at its moment of greatest need. With an offer to bring a powerful group of allies to this fight, many of whom are already here fighting for Hamilton right now. And so we're not here presenting a bid for others to judge. We are offering our minds, our hearts, and a hand, as are countless others around the world, inviting you to take it and to work with us, with other communities in this region and in other parts of the world, to collectively build something that can change this community forever and show it for what it is, for what we are, under the rust and grit, a remarkably diverse, compassionate, innovative, and determined community that has the confidence to not only transform itself, but to aspire to change the world while welcoming you. What you're about to see is an initial concept for our hosting strategy. Some or most all of it could change with feedback from you and senior levels of government, but it is our start and so we begin a conversation today 
And while we are doing most of the talking, we intend to do most of the listening as we move forward so that we can collectively create something truly remarkable that can give us hope, help, and heart right now. Back to you, Teddy. Thanks very much, Lou. I'll get that right now the second time. Lou will be back to answer your questions after our presentation. And don't forget to write in your questions in the Q&A box on your screen. I'd now like to call on our next two speakers. Greg Megchak is a manager of special projects for the city of Hamilton. Greg has worked for the city for more than 30 years and was responsible for organizing and planning all the Pan Am Games initiatives when Hamilton was host of soccer during the Pan Am Games in 2015. Greg will have details and some highlights around the venues. Greg will be joined by PJ Mercanti, president of Hamilton 2026. PJ is CEO of Carmen's Group, a local hotel and catering business that has operated for years in the city. Carmen's is a partner in a consortium the city recently selected to redevelop and operate several downtown entertainment venues, including First Ontario Centre, First Ontario Concert Hall, and the Hamilton Convention Centre. After Greg speaks about venues, PJ will give us an update on the budget. Greg, take it away. Thanks, Ted. I, I will mention for the viewers that I'm now retired. I retired about a year and a half ago. So I've made this pretty well my full-time volunteer commitment to work with such a great team to bring the games here. With the 2026 Commonwealth Games, we have a once and a forever chance to build facilities that many Hamiltonians, some of which are you, have waited for your entire life and now it's that time. And owing to the pandemic and the Federation offer, we can start building them right now having them available far sooner than what we had hoped for 2030, employing Hamiltonians at a time that is most needed. Over the past two years, we have worked with some of Hamilton's finest architects, international venue consultants, and international sport architects to develop what we believe is a modest and practical approach for an incredible legacy of needed recreational and sporting facilities. I will only speak to three key sporting venues, but will touch briefly on the majority of them so that you have an overview of the game's venue plan. The Athletic Complex. Athletics, in 1928, we built a new stadium, a stadium that would host the Olympic trials and the very first British Empire Games, named Civic Stadium. And in 2026, history will again repeat itself with a replica of that very first civic stadium, built of course to modern standards with amenities like proper change rooms, storage, back of house, offices, community meeting spaces, a world-class 400 meter track accompanied with a warm-up track and an additional 2,500 permanent seats, ideal for hosting regional and provincial events right here on Hamilton Central Mountain. And in the event the games proceed in partnership with Athletics Canada, we are working on a plan to expand this facility at private sector expense to include a year round indoor track that could become the center of excellence for athletics here in Canada. The Ancaster Multi-Sport Center. Recently, a feasibility study was done in regards to a multi-sport facility in our city. And it was determined that there is no greater need in this region than the need for additional gyms. With our plan, we have included a year round indoor facility with a total of six gyms, which includes a show court and 1800 telescopic seats. This venue will play host to badminton at the 2026 games, but post games will be the home to multiple sports like volleyball, basketball, and yes, pickleball for our seniors. It will include a glazed curtain wall for views into all six courts, a private lounge, meeting and community spaces, and offices to accommodate the primary user groups of the facility seven days a week in the community of Ancaster. We are so pleased to be partnering with Redeemer University College leadership in this effort who are assisting financially with this project and will assume the operating costs of this facility following the games. The McMaster Aquatic Complex. The Mac Pool is over a half a century old. 
It is the oldest outdated 50 meter pool in all of Canada. And that is about to change if the 2026 games come to Hamilton. It will be placed with a world-class 50 meter, 10 lane competition pool with a thousand permanent seats. But it will also have for the games, a second eight lane warm-up pool to meet all international standards. But the second pool will be designed so it can be converted post games to a 25 meter community pool with a large therapeutic hot tub, providing both legacy for high performance athletes to recreational use for students, children, families, and seniors to use throughout the year on the beautiful campus of McMaster University. We're also delighted to be partnering with McMaster University and its strong leadership on this project as they too will financially support this effort. McMaster Aquatics Complex has been on the drawing board for over 30 years. This is the moment we can get it built for this community without waiting any longer. The other venues will be refreshed, renewed, and refurbished across our entire city. The Hamilton Convention Center for Table Tennis, the International Broadcast Center and Main Press Center, Eastwood Arena and Park, a community hub and home to nine internationally sanctioned outdoor three-on-three -three basketball courts. How cool is that in the heart of our city, fully accessible for Hamilton's youth? Who knows, you might see Kia Nurse or Shea Alexander back home practicing during the off season. Confederation Park, home to beach volleyball, a new field house, 10 courts, one show court, and all the amenities like proper change rooms, storage with bleacher and patio seatings. Improvements to the JL Greitmeyer Market Street Arena for boxing, the Dave Anderchuk Arena for netball, Tim Hortons Field for rugby sevens and the opening ceremonies, which is of course the original site of the first opening and closing ceremonies. And how nostalgic and historical is that to our proud city. Extensive road work in Ancaster Dundas for the time trials and road cycling events. And can you envision the vistas of those communities similar to when the world watched the ICU Road Cycling Championships in Hamilton in 2003? The nations of the Commonwealth will all have an opportunity to see just how wonderful these communities are and just how proud we call this our home. Lastly, but so important to our downtown vision, the major renovations to both First Ontario Arena and Concert Hall. Host to the closing ceremonies, artistic gymnastics and weightlifting, led of course by our outstanding president, community volunteer, and a hugely proud Hamiltonian, Mr. PJ Mercanti. Thanks, Greg. Uh, that was a great, uh, great summary of the venues and I'm delighted to be here to share with all of you the proposed capital budgets. And before I get into the specific elements of the budget, wanted to share that we have a proposed venue and sport plan that we believe respects the taxpayers of both the city and the country. We think that our plan is very modest and affordable and is not extravagant or excessive. And a demonstration of that fact is that when we presented our 2030 games plan, our capital budget number was coming in at 550 million. And in the, in, in the delivery of a new proposed capital plan for 2026, we were able to cut out $300 million worth of capital projects. And we have a current optimized capital plan coming in at just under $250 million of total capital investments. And, uh, and we believe that even with that dramatic reduction in overall capital costs, that we still have some significant legacy projects that we will be providing to the city of Hamilton, to the, to the fine citizens of Hamilton. And in, in reviewing the, the specific competition venues on this slide, you'll see that there are various amounts that reflect the venues that Greg had shared. And we believe that, that this is, that this is a, a tremendous opportunity to ensure that there's a high ROI for, for the city and, and, and it will provide a tremendous legacy. Uh, this is a customized venue plan that suits the needs of Hamiltonians 
with flexible options that will in, you know, enable consideration by stakeholders and, and we can decide upon the desire for legacy or a focus on driving cost savings. And in a moment, I'll share what some of the other venues that we could contemplate would be and how that would adjust the budget. And so, so here on this slide, we've got alternative venues that in the case that the will of, of you know, various governing bodies uh, is to, to reduce costs, we do have alternate venues, regional venues that we could host the various sporting events in tomorrow. So we're delighted that we do have an opportunity to, to have these regional assets deployed in the case that we do need to reduce the overall cost. And in doing so, we would have a low cost option where you saw the $250 million number for our optimized capital plan. The low cost option would come in at around 175 million and and we believe that that would be amongst the most uh, cost effective capital plans in in games recent history which we're we're delighted and proud about and one other important item to note as it relates to the capital planning is that these numbers have been produced by the likes of pcl uh, who are who are very well respected in the construction world they've been vetted by turner and towns and cost estimators and we've also been working very closely with Guy Lodge and the other leaders of Commonwealth Games Federation on ensuring that these numbers are very realistic and, and they've given us indications that they are. And they've built in contingencies on, uh, on you know, escalation over the next few years. And, and we believe that they're very defensible numbers. Now this slide that's before you here is a capital plan funding breakdown and where we have the various Hamilton centric venues. So it's important to identify that this specific slide are just the venues that would be uh, seeking capital upgrades or, or new builds uh, in the greater Hamilton region. And as you'll see from this, in terms of the, of the funding breakdown, there's a substantial component of private sector and institutional investment into these facilities, which would be amongst the highest proportion of private sector and institutional investments into venue capital in games history, which we're certainly very proud of. Uh, it's also uh, important to note that any capital asks of the city of Hamilton would not be new funding from the city. We would be relying on existing funding allocations where possible and the 10 year capital plan being an example of that, as well as the future fund. That very fund was used to assist with the, the construction of Tim Hortons Field. Uh, and that was a substantial investment as many of you would realize, but the city generated a, a three times return on investment with the deployment of those future funds. And in the case of our capital plan, where this, we would be contemplating a $35 million investment from the city of Hamilton via these various funding uh, components, it would yield a seven times return on investment for city dollars invested into the capital plan. And as you would see that there would be a significant component of senior government funding to assist with the construction or refurbishment of these city venues. And at present, the capital plan contemplates that 50%, uh, approximately 50% of the overall budget allocation would come from senior government, 36% would come from private sector or institutional, and a very modest 14% would come from the city of Hamilton via the capital plan and the future fund. And so we're delighted to share this, uh, this news with you. And, and while it was not um, a component of, of this very uh, spreadsheet, we do want to touch on the operating budgets. And one important point to note, as you would have seen in some of the previous slides, is that there will be no new operating costs to the city with some of these proposed new venues or renovated venues. Uh, and the goal would be to have the games legacy fund to cover the ongoing venue operating commitments that these facilities would uh, would provide and and we also are delighted to share and there will be more details provided in the coming uh, coming weeks but the games legacy funds that would be established out of the commonwealth games initiative would hopefully assume the recreation assistance fee program uh, funding that the city currently provides. So at present, the city provides 
$350,000 per year out of the current tax levy. And we would aim to assume those resp financial responsibilities. And in doing so over a 20 year time window would save the local taxpayers approximately $7 million. So we're delighted to share that there are ways in which this Commonwealth Games initiative could reduce future tax uh, levy costs for taxpayers of Hamilton in the future. And, and as it relates to other elements of the operating budget, this would ultimately be negotiated by the federal government, provincial government, and municipal governments, along with the Commonwealth Games Federation, especially in areas of security and transportation. So we would be truly striving to have a very optimized, right-sized operating budget, but we require the consultation of those various levels of government and the Federation in order to ensure that we're presenting a, an operating budget that is respectful of the taxpayer and that yields the highest ROI to all stakeholders as possible. And as it relates to the city's contribution to the operating budget, there are ways in which the city can use in-kind services to ensure that there's not actual dollars necessarily going out. And one example of that is for the various city owned venues that we would be contemplating for use out of a Commonwealth Games. And just to cite one example, the Greitmeyer Arena, the city could opt to reduce its current rental fee as a way of it contributing to the games investment. So that's an example of an in-kind investment that the city could use in lieu of a cash investment which would be a way of the municipal share being uh, contributed towards the operating costs of the game. So I wanted to share those high level points. And in terms of other long-term financial benefits that would be born out of this financial investment, there are various uh, economic studies that points to the fact that there would be a 25% lift in tourism related activities uh, post games for up to a 20 year time period, which would result in significantly more hotel stays and restaurant visits and tourism visits into the city of Hamilton. There, with the new enhanced national and international profile, that would yield greater incremental investments in Hamilton, the securing of more marquee events and conventions and other major sporting events, which we're proud about. And ultimately this would yield a community win that would bring the people of Hamilton together as Lou had outlined in his great introduction, which we believe this could be a great city building exercise that would truly transform the city. So happy to pass this back to Teddy and look forward to any questions that folks may have. Thank you for the updates, PJ and uh, Greg. They'll be available to answer any questions after our presentations in a few minutes. Don't forget to write in your questions in the Q&A section on your screen, and I'll try to read out as many as possible in the next hour, where we're hoping for as much interaction with you as possible. Our next panelist is a Canadian Olympian and six-time Commonwealth Games champion, Alexandra Orlando. Alexandra knows all about the power of sport. Alex will paint a picture of what we can expect in 2026 and beyond from a sports point of view. Alex, take it away. Thank you so much, Teddy. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the forum today and taking part in this important and critical conversation. I always say that hosting a games is truly about community and about all of us and your engagement today and in the future will ultimately shape these games and what they'll become and what they can do for the city. So thank you all for taking the time to be here. And I'm honored that I get to play a small role in the discussion today and share my experiences as someone who's represented this country for most of my life and not only at the Commonwealth Games, but Pan American and Olympic Games as well throughout my gymnastics career. Uh, so I'm here and I feel so strongly about this opportunity and about Hamilton 2026 because as Teddy said, I believe in the power of sport and the passion that this incredible team has to use sport as a real catalyst for projects, initiatives, infrastructure, that this community needs. And I've seen it firsthand as a, an athlete, as a, a game staff member, as an advocate, how multi-sport games can truly be one of the most transformative vehicles to create real and meaningful change within communities. And I see that vision here, and this is at the core of the hosting plan. Uh, and it's truly, you know, and 
enlightening and inspiring to see that and see the work that has already been done to get here and to get to this moment. You know, as you've heard, the Commonwealth Games are one of the most significant multi-sport events in the world, bringing over 3,800 athletes across 71 nations and territories across 18 sports together. Um, but what really makes the Commonwealth Games unique, and in my personal opinion, is they're truly a sporting event and the only one, I would, I would say, that leads from a place of inclusion. And you see that with the integration of para-sport events as well as the values that the games and the brand and the movement represent of humanity, of equality, of transformation, of building stronger communities. Like this is, when we say the Commonwealth sport movement, it, it really is a movement because they are, they're doing things differently and they're focusing on bringing athletes and communities and citizens together to create a better future and a better future for, for all of us. You know, when I competed at the 2006 Commonwealth Games, seems like a long time ago now, uh, in Melbourne, Australia, it, standing on top of the podium, uh, wearing the maple leaf and, and being able to carry the Canadian flag at closing ceremonies uh, has been one of the most incredible experiences uh, of my life. Uh, but what really stuck with me, you know, what really stayed with me and what keeps me doing what I'm doing now and why I work in sport and why I'm so passionate about it is, is I watched a city come to life. Uh, I watched families from all different walks of life and different socioeconomic backgrounds participate in the games, pack arenas, go to cultural events, get up in close and personal with athletes and be, be inspired firsthand. Uh, I saw a city that used, you know, iconic venues and repurposed them for different sports events uh, and cultural demonstrations. So I competed at the Rod Laver Arena, which was your tennis then. Uh, it, it was unbelievable. I could feel the energy even stepping foot there. But those are the, the moments that people don't forget. And those are things that still give me, you know, goosebumps to this day. And, and it hit me, that it impacted me in such a way that I've never experienced anything like that before. Uh, that was the first time as an athlete, I thought, you know, this, this is bigger than me. This is, this is about way more than just my few minutes, you know, on, on the mat, uh, representing my country, uh, we can create a real change here. And part of the movement that also makes it so unique was, you know, the res the great respect and the great involvement with the indigenous communities and the local youth as a part of this movement and a part of bringing a games together that's, that's gonna create real legacy and not just venue legacy and infrastructure legacy, but human legacy as well. And so I'll just, I'll just end with this. As you, as you clearly probably can tell, I'm, this means a lot to me and it's something that's very close to my heart. Uh, but as Lou mentioned earlier, you know, we're living through an incredib incredibly challenging time. We see division and, and fear and uncertainty around us. And sport is one of the few things that unifies us and allows us to believe in the possible and believe in the incredible things we can achieve when we're working together. And Hamilton 2026 is an opportunity for us to not only be proud to host the Commonwealth, but to showcase our great people, our innovation, our businesses to the world and create something that will address the needs of our people and of our region. And as you heard, access funding that we never have the opportunity to access or it would take years to be able to get to that point to accelerate projects that we need right now. Um, and so at the end of it, and at the end of the story for me too, um, I just wanna kind of leave you with the thought that the games and Hamilton 2026 will you know, inspire us all to be best versions of ourselves and build stronger communities, healthier communities, more resilient communities for us, for our children, uh, where no one is left behind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. You know, I, I had the opportunity at CBC to cover three Commonwealth Games over the years, including the last time they were in Canada in 1994 in Victoria. And those games left quite a legacy along the lines of what Alex was, was painting for you. One of the moments that I won't soon forget was the Canadian men's 4x100 relay team winning the gold medal, one of the first times that had ever happened. The likes of Donovan Bailey and Bruni Surin emerged as top stars to watch for years to come after that. 
Our final speaker this afternoon is the Director of Operations for Iroquois Lacrosse. Kevin Sandy is a member of the Cayuga Nation, the Wolf Clan Six Nations of the Grand River. Kevin is also a leader in the area of sport development, business development, plus sharing cultural education. He'll speak to us about what the games and the inclusion of lacrosse means to his community. Kevin, take it away. Good oh, afternoon. Sweet. Yeah, there we good go. afternoon. Thank you, Teddy. Yeah. Just want to say, uh, uh, Scano and Swagwego, uh, and Wenatree, Owatne, I uh, hope everyone is well. It's a beautiful day. Hopefully everyone's, and everyone is, uh, staying well and healthy, uh, during this, during this time. Uh, what does, what does the games mean to, uh, to, uh, our community? I come from the, uh, community along the Grand River of Six Nations. And for me, the, the game actually really is connected right back to our creation. It's right, connected right back to our creation story. It's connected right back to our teachings. It's correct, connected right back to our beautiful way of life. And, and I'm sure everyone has kind of read, if you haven't, the worldwide, what's with the challenges that are going on right now with respect to uh, our, our, our major world team, actually in terms of uh, inclusion and diversity into world games. And I think this, me, really epitomize what these games are all about. It's uh, really, it's about unifying our people. It's about unifying our nations. It's about that catalyst for change and transformation that individuals have talked about. It's actually about an opportunity that individuals have and communities have to um, build a bridge and get a better understanding of one another. And I think that's an opportunity that I see not only from a community and social change, also in the, in the economic in an economic sense as well, I see it as a uh, any investment into into communities actually results in change and transformation, employment, knowledge, skills development. It re, it, it results to me in in an opportunity for all of us to um, come together. That's what the games really truly represent for for myself, and I, th I think in the in the overall scheme of things, if we're looking at games the the games and sport in my community is a, represents a significant change the cultural sport tourism in in our community is, is huge it's it's major and anything that we've done in the past we've hosted world events here in our community and the community comes out the people come out all of the time and they come here to support they come here to support the cheer and share and the passion the excitement and the me it's the vibrancy of the games that are being played and I think that's the aspect of me that really that's something I said that that you can't really measure I think it's intrinsic to who we are as people it's something that is 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 significant and it, and, it, and I think that significant lends itself uh, very well because the game as you see is connected connected to our mother the earth it's connected to our spirit is connected to everyone in the game while, while it's while it's a, our game is a Canada's national sport it was used to connect people together it connected this nation together it connected nations of people together from all walks of life and really that's what this game is all about it's something I said that uh, people truly don't understand I think the opportunity but also to me it fits into fits into a, the, the global stage because uh, the opportunity that I see for our young people is very significant. The opportunity that I see them not only to play the game and the sport that they love, but to also give back, give back to uh, the, the game that's, that has done so much, so much for our people uh, that builds that pride, that builds that excitement that builds that passion and and i think really that's that's the opportunity that i see I, I think for the games the the games is really about connecting the people it's about connecting the communities and and that's that's what it really represents and i and i think the aspect of um hosting the games and in, in collaboration with the city of hamilton to me is a significant opportunity it's an opportunity for a public for public, indigenous, uh, private sector to come together and really, truly 
see the value of us working together because in what's going on in this world right now in terms of the pandemic, that's what we all have to do. We have to unite our minds, our bodies, our spirits and, and emotions and, 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 and see, I think, the, the value of, of what sport really does. And, and, and I think I, I, I had a conversation earlier today actually with one of my family members and, and we were talking about not only the beauty of, of this game, says, but also what it really truly means. It is, it is a medicine and, and it's something I said that, that goes beyond just the contemporary sport. It's about healing. It's about giving back. It's about uh, a change. It's, a, it's about transformation. It's about inspiration. It's about everything that a young person would do when they're getting ready uh, to, to, I guess, as their rites of passage for moving, for moving, I guess, from one element of their life and transcending to the next element of their life. And, and I think that's really what athletes have to do. Athletes have to do that when they're actually looking at themselves. They look at mind, body, spirit, physical, mental, and emotional. And I think that's something I said that, that we're always involved in. And as a community, as a community of, of here of Six Nations, and that's something I, I know our leadership here, we'll say both, uh, both councils sit down here would totally stand behind what's happening because the, the significant part for me is that would be an opportunity to welcome the world. It'd be a welcome, an opportunity to welcome the world and working together to showcase our beautiful cultures, you know, our, our beautiful languages and, 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 the, and the way that we do things. And I think that's it's like you invite, I invite people into my home, into my come to see my family, that's what happened within the spirit of the games within the city of Hamilton. It's that opportunity to, to, to really, I think, look at it as a family, look at it as a nation and looking at, looking at it in terms of uh, what, what it can do for all of our communities. Not only does it fit into the uh, urban indigenous strategy in, uh, that, the, that the city of Hamilton is working on, but also it fits to me uh, from a global level into what, what we're aspiring to do with our with our national men's and women's program and sport to me makes a significant impact it always has it always will uh, right from right i guess say right from day one right from our from our creation story when the game was gifted to us and i think that's something to me that represents significant value to, to the people and and really that's what it's all about and it's and it's really an opportunity to create some meaningful dialogue, working with communities and uh, working in partnership. And I, I worked with Greg and, and some of his colleagues on, on the Pan Am Games, in, in not only in Hamilton, but I was in Toronto as well. And, and, and our community played a significant role, even in building some of the infrastructure at Tim Horton Stadium in, in Hamilton. We had like erectors, we had tradespeople working down there as well. And that's, and that's the kind of collaboration that, that, that I can see from a, Community stand. We we have so many uh, knowledgeable, skilled individuals from my community who would, who would love to an opportunity to be part of the games and and even when it comes to uh, the media, the broadcasting, seeing it out globally, uh, uh, the youth. I see the youth being an excellent part of this because they're all up on social technology and media and everything that goes along with that. And and really, that's that's what I see. The the game. The game that we call in our language, is actually, uh, it's more than just a sport. It makes a difference in my community's life. It makes a difference in my people's life. It makes a difference in the nations across the world's lives. And, and, I, and that's, that's what actually the game and our participation in the games will do. It, it'll result in a significant impact to people people and, and that's really the beauty of hosting all of these games is uh it's about empowerment it's about inspiration and it's about really changing the way we do things the way we see one another and it's our commitment of working together to collaborate for change and better understanding that's what the games truly mean for myself it's and i i, I can't speak for all of all, all of our families in my community but 
I know that's that's what it's that's what it's done for a number of individuals who who play not only at the local level in Hamilton, who play provincially, who play nationally, who play internationally. It's about unif unification of our nations, and I think that's really that's the greatest stimulus that anyone can have. And as soon as you can inspire and empower a young mind and we can do that and mobilize and take action to make it happen. We're, we're sharing what our purpose is. Everyone in this world has a purpose. Everyone in this world has a gift that's been given to you. And we appreciate, we respect, we show that love to one another and great and wonderful and beautiful things happen. And that's what the games represent to me as a Ongwe Hongwe male, and I know even Ongwe Hongwe females, that's what it represents to them. But I think that's what it represents to, 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 to Canadians alike and people from, a, from across the world. It's an opportunity for change. It's an opportunity for mobilization. But it's an, it's an opportunity for us to communicate and collaborate and work together. Yeah, well, and uh, I'll turn it back over to uh, Teddy. Thank you very much, Kevin. Um, very well said. Uh, painted a great picture of what the games will mean to your community.